Hello, and welcome to another thrilling episode of the Dojo. This time we are doing an episode on Yoko Zuna going huge. Ow! Ow! Oh! Oh, that's things. Ow! Nope. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dohyo. We have reached the point of quarantine hair where we have said it is far too hot so we have taken shears to the head and I think I love my new summer do. What do you think? Today we have a wonderful episode talking about Yokozuna going Kyujo, that is, uh, going injured and then taking the rest of the tournament off and then not being demoted as is their prerogative as Yokozuna. The question I'm going to ask is how much Kyujo is too much Kyujo? So any of you who have watched the channel before know I like to make charts about sumo, and today is no different. I made a big spreadsheet of all of the Yokozuna, basically from Taiho to today. I wanted to create a database of all of the Rikishi who had their prime in the 15-day tournament, six tournaments a year format. So I went through, found all these Yokozuna, there are exactly 25 of them from Taiho to Hakuho. I inputted a whole bunch of data about the number of Basho each one of these Yokozuna spent at Yokozuna, the number of Kyujo, and then I checked to see what the gap were between their U shows to see if that was something where, like, ah, you're getting old and hurt, so we need to kick you out the door. Were they using that as a benchmark? Were they using 10 plus win tournaments, or what they called the Yokozuna Kachikoshi? So all of this is going in there, along with the ages of promotion, the ages of retirement, and also, this was a fun crowdsourcing experiment. So a huge shout out to you on the subreddits and on the Facebook groups. Thank you so much for answering my weird sumo polls. <laughs> really, thank you. We'll get to the crowdsourcing data later. Right now we're talking about how much Kyujo is too much Kyujo. Now the first thing we need to remember is that Haku has been a Yokozuna for 77 Basho at this point, which is far longer than anyone else. So when you're thinking about Hakuho and like, oh, he's gone Kyujo X number of times, remember, he's been a Yokozuna 22% longer than anyone else ever has, so maybe give him a little bit of the break on that. And speaking of that, quick sidebar. One of the coolest things about Hakuho is that he is the only Rikishi to win a tournament in three consecutive decades. Even cooler, he's the only Rikishi to win a tournament at Yokozuna in three consecutive tournaments. And it got me thinking, how many other Yokozuna could have even done this? Because, follow me here, you need at least 60 tournaments at Yokozuna. So that's like 10 years, 6 tournaments, 60. So you need at least one tournament at Yokozuna on one end and one at the other end. So you need 62 tournaments at Yokozuna to even possibly be able to win a tournament at Yokozuna in three consecutive decades. You may be wondering, how many Yokozuna have even done that? Only one other than Hakuho, Kita no Umi. He was a Yokozuna for 63 Basho. So essentially, one more than the absolute minimum required to be able to win a tournament at Yokozuna in three consecutive decades. Another thing you need to just wrap your mind around when you're thinking about the greatness of Hakuho. We should all celebrate Hakuho. I went through all of the Yokozuna since Taiho, and on my spreadsheet, I figured out the percentage of tournaments in which the Yokozuna went Kyujo. Now, in this data set, there were two big outliers in terms of percentage. One, unfortunately, was Kisano Sato. He only completed two of his 12 tournaments at Yokozuna, which gave him something like an 83% Kyujo rate. So, we're going to throw him out of this data set, and we're also going to throw out Tama no Umi, who never, ever went Kyujo at Yokozuna, because he died... Tragically, at age 27, having never gone Kyujo at Yokozuna. Yay? 
Now the QGO percentage tends to work itself into like thirds once we take out those two outliers. The top third, or like the worst third, goes from about 45% at the worst down to a little above a third of the time injured. Then you have the middle group of Yokozuna who were injured about a third of the time to about a fifth of the time. But then at the bottom you have this group of Yokozuna who missed fewer than a fifth of all of their matches at Yokozuna. And guess who's right there at the bottom? I mean, the good part, the, 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 fewer, the fewest missed. It's Hakuho. Hakuho is down there. He's in the teens. He's down there with a few of the Yokozuna who did not miss many tournaments because they ended up getting kicked out of sumo before they got too old. So if we look at the historical standard, he seems to be doing better than the historical standard, which roughly is about 31%, according to Redditor 2 by 0 and yes, Hakuho has gone Kyujo 13 times, but like I said, he has been a Yokozuna for 77 tournaments. 13 out of 77 is just not that many tournaments to go Kyujo, especially when compared to other Yokozuna, like, say, Kakuryu. Because we talked about Kisuno Sadu being like 80%, and then we had that big group right there of people that were like around 40%. That's Kakuryu. Kakuryu has gone Kyujo 15 times out of 37 tournaments at Yokozuna. So, if we're talking about which Yokozuna is going to retire first, I'd say Kakuryu is much more likely. Now I know a lot of you are going to come back with, yes, but Hakuho has been missing like every other tournament. He's missed more than half the tournaments in the past three years because all of his Kyujo have come pretty recently and... You're right, you're actually, you're very right about that. Hakuho went Kyujo as an Ozeki in 2006 then did not go Kyujo again until 2015, then like once again in 2016, and then starting in 2017, he started going Kyujo pretty regularly. He's been Kyujo 11 times since the start of 2017. Which were the statistically minded, you'd say, that's more than half. And you're right. But the standard for asking Yokozuna to retire does not seem to be misses every other tournament. So, I went through all the Yokozuna, and you tend to see that there are a lot of arcs in how Yokozuna tend to retire. The most common one is that they become Yokozuna, they're really awesome at Yokozuna, and then there's that slow injury curve down. And that slow injury curve can last like one tournament, or it can last like a year and a half if we're talking about Takanohana. Takanohana took seven consecutive full 15-day Kyujos off, and then he came back and got a Junyu show. And they're like, ah, oh, it's great, and then he went Kyujo again, and then they were done. But so it's, there is clearly a standard being set for Yokozuna going Kyujo. Has Hakuho gone seven in a row? No, Hakuho has not even gone more than two tournaments without finishing. That's right, Hakuho has gone at most two consecutive tournaments without finishing a 15-day tournament. And if you look back since the beginning of 2017, Hakuho has gone Kyujo 11 times. He has also won seven tournaments, which is by far the most of anyone else in that tournament. So why ask someone who is clearly the most dominant rikishi in the sport? He won two tournaments ago. He's still there at actively doing well. He even got ten wins in this tournament before going Kyujo, which a lot of people say is the standard for Yokozuna excellence. <laughs> One point I would like to bring up is that he is very, very old for a Yokozuna right now. In fact, both of our Yokozuna are 35 right now, which is the oldest Yokozuna we have had in the modern era. Chiyuna Fuji is the only one older. I asked you all, what age do people get promoted to Yokozuna and what age do they retire? Now we seem to get the promotion era pretty right. Now some of you were very specific, like, well, if you're a dominant Yokozuna, you're a Yokozuna by age 23. It's like, well, yeah, okay. But generally, the overall was about 25, 26, they get promoted. But we all seem to think that they retire at 33, 34, 35. There were a lot of people in the crowdsource study who seemed to think that Yokozuna generally retire at around 34, 35. That is not the case. They tend to retire uh, at 30, 31 according to the stats. So I think our current awesome, like, longevitous Yokozuna is skewing everyone's idea of how long Yokozuna actually stay Yokozuna. I'm also seeing some criticism of Hakuho uh, online for uh, getting out of the tournament when he knows he's not going to win. Uh, this is true, I think. Uh, going back, uh, this is one of the problems with being Hakuho, is that you just win most of the tournaments. But if you look back, Kakuryu is the only person to beat him in a 15-day tournament, going back to Kisa Sato's first victory back in 2017. 
So if you look at all the Yusha winners, that are like, oh, these cool, surprising Yusha winners, oh, Asanoyama, Mitaka Yumi, one, two, Taka Keisho. All these happened while Hakuho was Kyujo. Another quick sidebar. Uh, if you look back, I had to look back very, very far to find a tournament where Hakuho fought all 15 days and the tournament winner was not a Yokozuna, or in the case of Kisno Sato, about to immediately be promoted to Yokozuna. The last tournament I could see that Hakuho finished all 15 days where he was not in contention on day 15 was January 2012 against Baruto. I'm pretty sure that Hakuho only stayed in the tournament at this point to be petty, because the tournament before, November 2011, Hakuho was going for a Zensho Yusho and on day 15 lost to Baruto. So in the very next tournament, Baruto was going for a Zensho and Hakuho was like, no, you're not getting that Zensho. I'm sticking around for this. And yeah, threw him out the ring. He's petty like that sometimes. I also get that there is an argument to be made from the performer standpoint, from the consistency standpoint, from the sumo needs to make money and have its stars standpoint. But when Hakuho goes Kyujo, other people get to win. That allows other stars to come up and start shining in their own right. Now, I know it's better for the sport for Hakuho to stick around and fight Asunoyama every time and fight Mitaki, I mean, fight these guys coming up because it helps build their legacy. But Hakuho is at the point right now where he doesn't need to worry about anyone else's legacy. He's not fighting other wrestlers. He's fighting himself. He's fighting time. He has a couple things he wants to do again. He wants to try to get to 50. Don't think he's going to get there, but he might get to 45. He wants to carry the torch as a Japanese citizen in the Olympics. Let's let him do that once we can have Olympics again. Please let it be soon. So if we end up in a situation where Hakuho loses a few tournaments in a row, or starts doing very, very badly, nay, even gets kachikoshi, or gets very, very injured, let's have that conversation then. And as long as Hakuho is able to get out there with certain amounts of regularity and still dominate, it's not up to us to tell him to quit. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Dohyo. We're going to have a couple more episodes before the next Ba Show. Of course, fun, fun predictions. And we're going to have an episode all about Shodai and how he has turned into boss-level Shodai. So everyone stay strong, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time on the dojo! Ow! Ow. Ow. Jikita rice. Jikita rice.